Hey everybody, um, every once in a blue moon I'll do something like this, you know, I think the only other movie review I did was Ralph Bakshi's Wizards, which was way back, but, <laughs> uh, anyway, since my last video was about, you know, Nintendo movie ideas, I thought, well, I think it, now's a good time to do this one, plus, one of these movies actually takes place this year in 2017, but, uh, I love sci-fi, and these are two of my personal favorites that, I feel like nobody really talks about them that much, it's... Fortress and Enemy Mine. I'm going to talk about Enemy Mine first. And there was actually a minor reference to this in the Family Guy episode where Peter keeps going, Roadhouse, which, I think that, you know, it's like somebody puts it on the shelf or something with, you know, movies that nobody really wants. I think that's the only reference I ever saw to this movie and anything. Uh, anyway, before I... I just want to talk to you how I first discovered this movie as a kid. Uh, for years, my stepfather had his own auto repair shop, which, um... You know, obviously running your own business can be very difficult, so he would do different methods to bring in more income. And before uh, Blockbuster and other video rental stores... Sorry, it's hot in here. Anyway, <laughs> um, he uh, bought a shitload of VHS tapes and he would let people pay to borrow them. You know, like his own little video rental place in there. But anyway, um, when he met my mom in 1989, he gave her... An NES, stuff that he had there at the shop, including an NES, which is where we got that, and all of his VHS tapes, which a lot of them, well, majority of them anyways, but a lot of them actually came in boxes like this, which is kind of weird, uh, CBS box it says on that. Um, but yeah, he had a ton of classics, like the Star Wars trilogy, uh, the first five Sean Connery James Bond movies, I remember my brother and I used to watch those all the time. Uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, The Fly, Carrie, Robocop, Back to the Future, uh, Enemy Mine, of course, Predator. <sighs> Sorry, sweltering in here. Uh, Masters of the Universe. And I can keep going, but you get the idea. Um, and a lot of times, uh, my sister um, our, our, and my brother and I, the three of us would like, go down there and just be like, Oh, this movie looks kind of cool. So we bring it up and watch it. Um, just thought of a few more. Short Circuit, Batteries Not Included in the Labyrinth. <laughs> Those were all like movies we had discovered. Like, like, oh, this is awesome. Like, your best movie we ever saw. But anyway, that's how I, we discovered Enemy Mine. Now, this movie takes place in 2017. You know, this, no. No, it's the other movie that takes place in 2017. Sorry. Uh, anyways, but this movie takes place in the future, which, um, so basically, many years ago in this movie, uh, world she world peace was actually achieved so because all the nations are united they decided let's combine our resources and find out what lies beyond the stars and such and by doing so they actually come across well you can see one of them on the cover here sort of they uh this alien species which are kind of like lizards that are called drax and uh because we're different you know a war breaks out between the two of them the two species and at one point uh, two pilots one human played by Dennis Quaid and one alien or Drac played by Lou Gossett Jr. they crash land on this barren planet <clears throat> naturally at first they're trying to kill each other and everything but then they slowly begin to realize that they're gonna have to work together in order to survive so a friendship forms like well, they become like best friends pretty much you can actually kind of see them on the back here um, they encounter all these other gr uh, weird little creatures and stuff. And there's a lot of funny comedy in the movie as well. Like this, uh, well, uh, Dennis Quaid's character is called Lewis Davidge, and Lou Gossett Jr.'s character is he has like some weird alien name, but he calls him Jerry. So there's a part when uh, because this planet gets a lot of meteor showers, and so uh, they decided to build a shelter, well, more Willis decides to build one, and, um, uh, he builds one that, it looks like shit, you know, just like a whole bunch of rocks and sticks and stuff, <laughs> so then he's like, ah, okay, this is good, and then Jerry's just like, because he, uh, Willis is trying to learn the Drax language, and, uh, Jerry is trying to learn, uh, the human language, so, uh, Jerry just goes, shit, like, when he see, and Willis is like, what do you mean, shit, and Jerry's like, dead. It's not solid or something. Jerry's like, uh, Willis, sorry, I keep mixing them up. Goes like, look, it, look, see, it's solid. It's fine. 
It's not, the whole thing collapses and Cherry stops dying laughing. Oh, it's hilarious. But, you know, it's such a... It's very, like I said, very underrated. Um, definitely worth checking out if you're a sci-fi fan. Um, it's, kind of, it's a sad movie, too. It's a lot of... Yeah. But now let's talk about Fortress. Now, this movie takes place in 2017. It was released in 1992, I believe. Yeah, well, it's not on there, but... It came out in 1992. And, um... Uh, it was stars Christopher Lambert, who was also in Highlander, and he was Raiden in the first Mortal Kombat movie. I think those are the only two movies that he was in that I'm familiar with, plus this. Um, and in this movie, basically, there's a law that... Because the world is so overpopulated, well, there's all kinds of crazy laws and shit, but because the world is so overpopulated, so many uh, uh, people, uh, uh, women can only have one baby, and um, so basically these, uh, uh, Christopher Lambert and his wife, I forget her, their actress's name, I don't think it's on here, but they're... Uh, I think they're trying to cross the border into Mexico where there's not really any laws down there for... But, um... And they're always... Because she's carrying their second child because their first one died at birth, but it's still like, nope, doesn't ca doesn't matter. You, can't, you can only have one. Even though that one's dead, you can't have another one, you know. So, um... But they're caught and they're brought to this, uh... Prison, which is run by, like, a computer. You know, super high, like, AI type of thing. And, um... You know, naturally, they're, like, split up, and, um, uh, they, t uh, this f facility, which is, like, very deep beneath the Earth's surface, and it's, um, <clears throat> they put these little metal things inside of you, like, in your mouth, down your throat, and into your stomach, and that's, like, how they control you. Like, if you're out of order or something, they'll, like, set it off, and it, like, makes this intense pain in your stomach. And, uh, uh, what's his name, uh? John Brennick, which is <clears throat> Christopher Lambert's character, plans to escape. You know, him and his uh, four cellmates are like, you know, want to... You know, they want in on it, like, including this... One, my favorite character is this, like, crazy guy who's, like, obsessed with technology and stuff. And he... <laughs> the reason he's in jail or in this prison is because uh, he blew up, like, an international safe and uh, his friends turned him in because he blew up the money. <laughs> but, um... And then he... You find out um, different things throughout the movie, like what they see. If you're um, a woman who's basically carrying, you know, they call them breeders, I guess. You're, you're carrying another child, and you're brought to this planet, uh, this prison. Uh, what they do is they cut the women open, you know, killing the woman, but the baby survives. Once they they put it in like a jar and everything, and then they you find a lot of this out throughout the later in the movie. But um, they take the baby and basically, like, grow it into another... They turn it into, like, a cyborg, like these super soldiers, almost, like, which you actually... They call them, uh, strike clones, which you see later on in the movie. Because so they have this, like, arm cannon. Like, I don't want to give too much away if you want to see the movie, but, um... They have this, like, arm cannon, almost like Mega Man, except there's, like, three gun cannon things. Like, one's a machine gun, a flamethrower, and then I think the other one shoots, like, steam or smoke or something. There might be a picture of them on here, but I don't, I don't think... Yeah, well, sort of. There's one right here you can kind of see, make out. Um, but anyway. So, uh, you know, John, like, plans an escape to, you know, escape the facility, which... Well, I don't want to give too much away, but... Um, and then the, the person who runs the facility is actually played by Kurt Ward Smith, who was the... The guy from Robocop, the villain from Robocop, uh, played Clarence Bodiger. But, like I said, I don't want to give too much away, but that's pretty much all I have to say about this movie. So, those are two underrated sci-fi movies, which, uh, if you've never seen them, I highly recommend checking them out. So, yeah, that's about it for this week. I got a new yay or nay video coming out next week. So, thanks for watching, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. And enjoy your week and all that shit. Yeah, bye.